Well, today really didn't turn out the way we thought it would. So today was supposed to be easy. Drive from Black Canyon of the Gunnison down to Mesa Verde National Park. Going through Uray and the Million Dollar Highway. Right. But Mother Nature, as she often does, had different plans for us. It was snowing over the pass. We couldn't get through Uray, so we had to go through Telluride and that way around to Cortez and up to the park. And they said that was the easy way. Let us show you some pictures of that. And then we'll show you Mesa Verde National Park. As we left Crawford, it began to sprinkle, then rain, then before we knew it, we hit snow. We had talked about going to your race since the beginning of our trip planning and driving the million dollar highway. But as the snow got deeper, the choice between the Uray and Telluride routes got closer. And we decided to stop into a gas station and ask for advice. They made it clear there really wasn't a choice. So we took the green route instead of the blue one and while we found the views to be beautiful, we were white knuckle all the way through these mountains. It would snow and then stop and get heavy again. Truly just not what we'd been expecting in mid-May. It seems we were supposed to meet some really great Colorado residents to save us from being stuck in the snow this trip. Mesa Verde begins with the Visitor Center, which is in the valley. This beautiful center has this striking sculpture honoring the Ancient Ones. And some truly breathtaking views. There's a small museum and gift shop inside to the left of the door where we got our stamp and began to explore. Mesa Verde National Park is known for its well-preserved ancestral Puebloan cliff dwellings, which were built between 600 and 1300 AD. The park covers an area of over 52,000 acres, and archaeologists have discovered over 4,700 important sites, including more than 600 cliff dwellings. Virginia McClurg began the campaign to preserve the park. She created the Colorado Cliff Dwellers Association devoted to saving the ruins and creating a park in order to reshare the wonders of the ancient ones and their homes, but was having issues getting any political traction. So she recruited Lucy Peabody. Along with several other women, they were able to persuade Congress to support creating a national park at Mesa Verde, and in 1929, it was established as a national park. A major falling out between McClurg and Peabody led to McClurg leaving the organization and Peabody being proclaimed by the press as the mother of Mesa Verde National Park. One of the fun things you get to see here at the center is the archives. You get to peek in and if you're lucky, get to see the archivist working on the pieces behind the glass. Hi, how are you? I'm well, how are you guys doing? Doing great. Welcome to Mesa Verde. Thank you. After leaving the center, you wind your way up through the hills to the top of the Mesa. While there is a campground, it's actually closer to the visitor center, not up on the Mesa. There are 15 full hookup sites, a few that can accommodate up to 46 feet. You can stay at the Farview Lodge, which is located at the top of the Mesa. And while we're not staying there for the night, we're going back for dinner. So they said all this damage was from the Long Mesa fire in what year? The cliff dwellings were located in a number of alcoves and on cliffs throughout the park. They were built using a combination of sandstone, wood, and mud, and were used as both homes and ceremonial sites by the Puebloan people. The dwellings range in size from one-room structures to large multi-room complexes and are connected by a network of trails and ladders. The Cliff Palace contained 150 rooms and 23 kivas and had a population of approximately 100 people. Out of all of the cliff dwellings concentrated within the boundaries of the park, 75% contain only one to five rooms each. Many are single room storage units. Mm -hmm. Looking at them from above is surreal. 
They look like models with no scale perspective. If there's a tour going on, you can actually get an idea of how big they are. These ranger-led tours held from mid-May to October can be purchased through recreation.gov. This canyon is amazing, but can you see the house with many windows? And you just missed it. Its many windows are actually doorways into 15 rooms, and there is evidence of a kiva. There is lots to do here in Mesa Verde National Park, including hiking and biking on the park's many trails. So in seeing these cliff, cliff dwellings, try to say that three times fast, we've got some questions. Yeah, I was wondering, you know, how they get there. Well, they, they just seem so inaccessible. And maybe, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, that you know the the the, the landscape might have been a little bit different, but it seems really difficult to get to to go to get water to get your food and everything. And maybe it was just for protection for that very reason that they're so inaccessible, you know, because you would be protected. It would be hard for an enemy to get to you. But it's you know just some of the questions that uh, I think remain unanswered. We're gonna have to do some research. Hemingway House was named for Mary Tilson Hemingway, who funded the first scientific archaeological expedition in the Southwest. It has 26 room and one kiva, and was part of the larger balcony house community. Bring binoculars or a long lens to make seeing these dwellings up close easier. Balcony house can only be seen by tour, and is not an easy one, with steep vertical ladders and narrow tunnels to crawl through so make sure to read up about the tour before booking. So as bad as the roads were at uh, Black Canyon of Gunnison, Gunnison, uh, these roads are incredibly smooth and look like they've just been done. The Mesa Verde Museum, one of the oldest in the National Park Service, was constructed between 1922 and 25 and it replaced a log cabin that had exhibited cultural items since 1917. The current exhibits focus on the story of the park from the lens of 20th century archeology. span These exhibits are under renovation to display how the discipline of archeology span changed over the years and to include the perspectives of the native communities for whom this place is sacred. And who built because it was easy to defend? In addition, the current exhibits are not accessible and cases don't meet today's curatorial standards. The Park Service is engaging native communities, archeologists, and other stakeholders in a collaborative design process. The goal is to have these new and updated exhibitions completed by 2025. Okay, so we found out some of the answers about how they got water. Yes, the water was in a reservoir. They had some reservoirs down at the bottom, and there was also um, what they call seepage. Seepage from the springs, right? right? Seep springs. Seep springs is the term. So it's pretty cool. They're very ingenious people. And their main food was? Corn, and they domestic domesticated turkey for protein, oh. which is very interesting. So we stopped in to the museum and talked to the ranger there. He's the one who gave us the information on the water and the crops. So the people only lived here about 100 years, um, around 1100 um, BC, uh, sorry, AD, is that right? <laughs> and he said their grandparents lived on that mesa that you see there and hunted and lived. And it wasn't until that 1100 AD that they came and created these cliff dwellings and you can sort of see at the top where there's like a little runoff little man-made metal runoff that's where um, sometimes the water would come over and fall down but he said that it also would seep through the walls and come up in just little small springs that gave them access to water. 
in the same complex are the park headquarters and the post office. We made our way back to Farview Lodge for dinner in their Matate room, which is known for its gourmet dining and incredible valley views. While we waited for our table, we explored the gift shop and discovered these cool tiles showing the different types of petroglyphs in the area before being seated. So we're about to have dinner at the Matate Room. I believe that's how it's pronounced. It's got some epic views and hopefully the food is going to be fantastic. We'll see. So we're kind of uh, wrapping up the journey. We're getting close to the end and um, just thinking about Mesa Verde was a, a really cool park. I think that uh, next time we come, I might actually book a tour and try to get in shape uh, because the altitude has been something. That's one of the things that surprised us the most. We didn't do a lot of research um, about the park's locations and things like that. And what surprised us the most, or surprised me the most anyway, is how high in elevation all of these parks have been. And uh, you know, and I was huffing and puffing in a lot of areas when we were walking. So that's that's something to take into consideration the next time we come. If I plan to take a tour, I might actually have to get in shape before I can go. <laughs> so after this morning and the crazy trip we ended up having to take, we entered the park after 2 p.m. So we knew there was no way we were going to be able to see everything, but we wanted to see the highlights. So we rushed all the way to the end. Um, to see those cl cliff dwellings and we were fascinated and then it was oh my gosh the museum closes at four we gotta hurry up and get over there if we want some of these answers to these questions that we have and so that really took up the bulk of our day but we're absolutely fascinated by how they were created and yeah a tour next time I think would be a really really good idea so we're gonna close out now um, Hang on, we're going to show you the rest of the park through the end. Uh, there are lots of lookouts and some amazing views you're going to want to see. So take care, safe travels, and we'll see you next time. The views were wonderful from here with the birds flitting through the brush, but it was the food that knocked it out of the park. It was every bit as incredible as promised and we topped it off with a decadent dessert. But the biggest surprise of the day was as we were leaving. So what you're looking at right now is a wild horse descended from Spanish conquistadors in the area, from what I was told inside at the lodge. And obviously they're running around. Don't know how many there are. They're just wild and roaming the Mesa Park, Mesa Verde Park. Since 2016, the park has averaged over half a million visitors annually, and we were so very happy to be part of that group. This park was dedicated to preserve the works of man, the first national park of its kind, and we found the history of the ancestral peoples, the care and preservation of that history by our National Park Service, and the stunning views to be simply incredible. Our trip definitely had its weird and wonderful sights to see, all from funny sculptures to great gas prices, to that wild horse and the incredible valley views. Thank you so much for joining us and for popping that like button. There is so much more to come on this Grand Circle Tour, including Monument Valley, the Painted Desert, and Petrified Forest National Park. So we do hope you will subscribe and come along.